Well, I'm stuck. So what happened? I've probably got a little bit lazy, whatever, but these last few dunes have had very steep little step ups onto the top. Now this particular one, I was approaching it and I flicked the diff locks on. Now in this vehicle, the, the diff locks don't actually engage really quickly. They need to get to a point where they can, the dogs inside the diff lock can engage. So when I hit the obstacle, they hadn't actually locked in at that point. So I've come up, I hadn't really noticed that they weren't engaged. I've got into it a little bit, dug a bit of a hole, stopped. Why, why aren't I going forward? Lockers aren't locked in. I go to go reverse, I can't. Then the lockers lock in, but it's all too late now. I try to work it and the vehicle does start to move forward. I'm like, oh, beaut, well, we'll just drive over. That didn't happen. And now I literally can't go forward and backwards. So there's multiple ways I can tackle this. But what I thought I would do is show you the power of the most simple four-wheel drive recovery tool. And that's the humble shovel. What we're going to do is see if we can get this vehicle unbogged or unstuck with just the shovel. And what I'm going to do as well, just to add to the challenge, is see if I can make it happen so that the vehicle goes forward. That's the way I want to travel, rather than going backwards, which would probably be slightly easier from a recovery point of view. But if I go backwards, I then have to still get over this sand dune. So I'm going to grab the shovel. I'm going to do a bit of digging in front of the wheels and see how we go bringing the vehicle forward the trusty shovel. Now, obviously, I could recover this with the winch, I could put some max tracks in there, and so on. But this video is just purely to show you the power of the simplest tool in our recovery kit. So what I'll do, dig in front of the wheels, and on this vehicle, being that it's leaf sprung, I'll also free up the leaf springs a bit so they're not bogging in the rear diff under the center there will be um, stuck into the sand as well the whole underbody of the vehicle is now sitting on the sand so we'll we'll try to free that up a bit what i'm trying to do in these trenches is do it uh, create the shape so that as soon as the vehicle starts to move forward, the vehicle starts to lift. So within that distance, I want the vehicle to be lifting and that frees up a lot of the underside automatically. So I'm basically creating a ramp. You can see how the spring's now clear here. So that won't hold me up too much. This sand isn't really a problem, but further in under the vehicle it probably is, but we're just going to try digging the wheels out first. Now I'm just clearing out under the front diff a little bit and the front radius arms. Sometimes when I'm watching people dig out from a bogging situation, they put energy into digging the sides of the tires. Completely pointless. You want to dig out where you're traveling to. Now there's those springs clearing out again. <sighs> the morning exercise. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to give this a go. We've reduced the recovery weight in front of the tires and in any recovery reducing the recovery load is a good thing that's why a shovel is one of the i think it's the most valuable recovery tool you've got above winches above max tracks or traction boards above any other tool the humble shovel will do you more good in more recoveries than any other tool Obviously, they're not much good in rock. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to jump in the car, put it in first gear low range, and very slowly apply the power. I'm not gonna go for a big dial of the numbers and 
throw sand everywhere. I don't want to dig myself down, I want to drive myself forward. And now both diff locks are engaged. I think we're going to drive out of this. Okay, as soon as those wheels started to turn, I didn't go forward. So that tells me I'm completely bellied out and we've got no traction under the tires. Now that happens when you spend too much time wheel spinning when you're starting to bog. Had I got off the power earlier, then I wouldn't have this situation. So what this means is a little bit more digging. So if we have a look under the car where we're stuck, we're not stuck on those radius arm mounts. We look like we're probably sitting on the on the mount, uh, the bottom of the transfer case there. But most of the issue will be at the back here. Look at all of this, just sitting hard on the sand. So we're going to free that up a bit. That's going to be fun. So what I'm going to do is dig a hole here because that's easy to dig, and then I'll pull the sand that's further in, into this hole. Okay, come over here. I'll show you what we're looking at now. Starting to get a bit of picture of what's going on. So you can see here, under the transfer case, we've got plenty of clearance now. That's not hanging me up, but <laughs> let's go to the back. <laughs> Look at that. Everything's sitting on sand. And that's the problem when you stay into the power, when, when you're not going forward, you go down. So we'll dig that out and free that up and see how we go after that. So I'm going to do the same thing again and dig myself a hole in where it's easy and then pull the sand into it. So we're currently about nine o'clock in the morning, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. It's still quite cool. The sand is quite firm, really, compared to what it gets to in the middle of the day. It gets very light and fluffy, still quite cool. Whenever you're doing a recovery, especially in a situation like this, be well aware of your, your personal um, rehydration, drinking plenty of water and uh, sharing the load amongst those who are with you. Um, if you're doing this in the heat of the day in a hot environment, you will consume an awful lot of uh, water and that. And don't, don't go like a bat out of hell. Like, there's many of us who don't spend our lives on the end of a shovel doing hard physical work. A recovery like this is hard physical work. So if you're not used to this work, you need to manage yourself and your expectations of what you can do. And I'm one of those guys. So I've got a good sweat going on right now. I had a drink when I hopped in the car there a moment ago. I don't think you'll be able to hear this on the camera. As I'm digging this spot here, I can hear creaking. That's telling me that we're, we're removing the area that's holding the vehicle up. That's a good thing, it's a good sign. What, that the, the car is settle, being able to settle down? Settle back down onto its suspension rather than being hung up on the under, under, under vehicle components. I'm actually getting to see the differential now. I'll dig a bit more and I'll show you. Let's have a look. So, that's the differential down there. And as you can see, it's not got a lot of sand around it anymore. But I'm gonna go over the other side of the car and do a bit of digging. Uh, so the springs, and shock mounted down in under there, but given I've dug this sand away, that should come away fairly easily now when I start to drive, hopefully forwards. <laughs> I might dig that out just a tiny bit more. 
You can get a good view of what's going on at the back of the car here as well. See how the fuel tank and this spring is all full of sand. I'm going to relieve a little bit of the weight back here as well. I think that'll work in my favour. Can you hear the suspension settling when I dig the sand out? There's the bottom of the shock mount. That's about the lowest point. So, we're making some good moves here. Hopefully good enough. We're right through. That's right through into the other hole I dug. You can see right through to the front of the car now. So we've really reduced the load. I'm going to do a bit over this side now. So I'm going to use the same technique as I did before. I want to be, I want to see forward momentum, not, not nothing. And last time we did this, I just spun the wheels. I didn't see any forward momentum. Geez, I reckon I got a good chance this time though. We've now cleared that initial bogging, but notice she's still struggling to go forward. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go backwards a little bit and then go forwards again. So there you go, eh? The humble shovel. It really is going to be the most valuable and cheapest recovery tool you have in your vehicle. Not only situations like this in sand, but in dirt and uh, mud, that sort of thing. A shovel is going to be imperative as part of your recovery kit. Now I will say, if you were to do this recovery in dirt or mud, then you would, um, then you would after you've recovered the vehicle, you would fill the holes that you've dug back in with that mud and dirt so we're not leaving great craters all over the landscape. And the other thing I would say is, obviously I've got max tracks in the vehicle, so or traction boards, and so to pull those out would have been great. They would have helped me. But the point of this video was to show you how powerful the simple shovel is. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.